Hello students, today we're going to learn about the basic groups of the periodic table. The periodic table is arranged in, in a, such a way that keeps elements of similar properties together. Okay, so that's really important to know. Uh, of course, we've already talked about this, but just as a reminder, groups go up and down, they're vertical. Okay, now, uh, Groups share many similarities. We already talked about the similarities of the valence electrons, okay? But groups share many similarities. Uh, periods go from left to right, okay? Now, the periods, um, they show periodically or regularly changing properties. And we'll learn more about that as we go through the unit the next few days. But periods are horizontal and groups are vertical, okay? Um, first of all, let's talk about the big sections of the periodic table. Um, the vast majority of the periodic table are made of metals. Okay, every see that you see, everything that you see here in the blue shade plus these pink ones here at the bottom, these are all metals. Okay, so everything to the left of the staircase. Okay, see the staircase here. Everything to the left are going to be your metals. Uh, some regular uh, properties of metals is that they conduct heat and electricity. They are malleable, which means they can be hammered into thin sheets. And if it helps you think of it, think of it of aluminum foil. Okay, and I'm abbreviating here. But aluminum foil is a very thin sheet of metal, and you can do that with metals. Okay, metals are also ductile, which means they can be made into wires. Okay, think of a copper wire. All right, um, that conducts electricity. Metals are able to uh, be turned into wires. Okay, and most um, metals are solids at room temperature. Of course, the the main uh, exception is mercury, symbol Hg, which is a liquid at room temperature. Uh, now let's talk about the nonmetals. The nonmetals are going to be to the right of the staircase. Okay, and they they are in the different shades of green here. Okay, uh, the nonmetals are insulators, which means they don't conduct electricity well, so they will insulate or they will stop electricity and heat from flowing. They are brittle, okay, which means they break up very easily. Okay, they can be solids, liquids, and or gases at room temperature. Okay, an, an example here: uh, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. And all of these over here are gases, okay, at room temperature. And bromine is a liquid. Uh, these other guys here are solid at room temperature. Um, and they are also the elements that usually are very, very important for life, okay? If we see here carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, very, very important for life. Okay, so all over here in this top right-hand corner of the periodic table are the nonmetals. Uh, now let's talk about the staircase, which are the metalloids. Okay, the metalloids share many similar properties to both the metals and the nonmetals. They're sort of in between. Okay, um, for example, the metalloids are semiconductors. Okay, they conduct electricity and heat, but not as well as the metals. But they're not insulators as the nonmetals. So just keep in mind that the metalloids are the staircase, okay, and their their properties are in between the metals and the nonmetals. Let's talk a, a little bit more specifically about the different groups in the periodic table. Group one, okay, with the exception of hydrogen in here, we call those the alkali metals. Okay? They all have one valence electron. Okay, and when they form ions, they will usually form ions with a positive one charge. Okay, they are very, very, very highly reactive and very much desperate to give away that one uh, valence electron that they have. The alkaline earth metals are in group two. Uh, again, these have two valence electrons, so they all have very similar chemical properties. And when they form ions, they will form ions with a positive two charge. Okay. Again, these guys also want to give up those two valence electrons that they have. Um, let's go over here to this middle block in the periodic table, which we call the transition metals. Okay. Uh, the transition metals don't really follow uh, the nice rules that these other 
groups follow as far as the valence electrons, okay? But they will always form positive, uh, positively charged ions, okay? Um, and so just always keep that in mind that their ions will always have a positive charge, and they're this middle block here in the periodic table. Here at the bottom, okay, if you see here, it goes from number 57 to number 72. It's because um, chemists decided to just take these atoms out here and put them on the bottom, okay, uh, because they're a little bit different. Um, most of these are highly radioactive, okay, metals, and we call these the lanthanide series, okay, or the lanthanides, and the actinides, okay. Uh, so the, this huge block here normally would fit in right here, but just due to spacing, okay, uh, chemists decided to organize a periodic table in this way. The halogens are the elements on group 17 right here, okay? Um, the halogens have seven valence electrons. They are also highly, highly reactive because they want to uh, just receive that one extra electron uh, in order to get a full valence shell. And when they form ions, they usually form ions with a negative one charge. Last but, but by no means the least, noble gases, okay? These are um, atoms with their valence shell completely full. They are highly unreactive, okay? Because their valence shell is already full and they really have no desire to react with another element in the periodic table to um, get their valence shell to be full because it already is full. And of course, these are all gases. Okay. Um, so just to, to recap here, positive one charge, positive two charge. Okay. For that group, this group here will form a positive three charge. Now the the nitrogen group here will gain three electrons, so they're going to have a charge of negative three. This group will gain two electrons, so they're going to be negative two and negative one. And of course, the noble gases will not form ions. Okay, these are the charges of the ions, so you can see the trend here in the periodic table. And then again, of course, every group, um, every here in the transition metals, when they form ions, they will always form positive ions. Okay, next, the thing I want you to do next is to get your periodic table and color it in the format that is similar to this periodic table. You do not have to use the same colors, okay, but I do want you to um, use specific colors, whatever colors you like, to delineate the different groups in the periodic table. Okay, make sure not to use dark colors or else you won't be able to see what's uh, your, on your periodic table. So you might want to get your paper periodic table out of um, your binder, okay? And make sure to include uh, the charges of the ions for those groups as well. Okay, that's it.